Recall how we were learning about these very different financial products. Well, we're going to go into a little detail about some of the ones that I didn't cover before. I mentioned how a more complicated type of MBS was a collateralized mortgage obligation, while a more complicated type of ABS was known as a collateralized debt obligation, and these were generally a collection of all debt products that weren't mortgages. These included CDBOs, a collection of bonds, and CLOs, a collection of loans. But sometimes these CDOs were mixed with different types of financial products, such as loans, credit card debt, car loans, bonds, and they were all grouped like fruit in a fruit basket. And these debt varieties had different maturities or time periods when they would all pay off. The point is, the thing that attracted investors to CDOs was their diverse offering of financial products. And there was a reason why diversity in the investment world was perceived as better. You remember how CDOs were a conglomeration of different types of debt. Here is a representation of one. Let's assume each ball here is a different type of debt. The red balls are loans, the yellow bonds are bonds, the green balls are car loans, and the blue balls are credit cards. Well, let's assume that there is a problem in the car loan market. If that fails, the rest of the CDO is still intact, hence why many bankers really liked these diverse economic products. Furthermore, another important aspect of the CDO was that, like CMOs, they were mixed with a variety of risk. A financial engineer at an investment bank assumed that mixing safe, decent, and risky investments in the right proportion could help yield a relatively stable financial product. Now here's how CDOs got complicated. They were sliced up into little pieces and then parts of them were pooled together to form this collateralized debt obligation. Now as said before, there were three different types of investors and each investor was put into a different category. Low risk investors paid the least amount of money and they got put in the senior tranche. The middle range investors were put in the mezzanine category and they wanted medium risk. And finally, there were equity investors, and these were groups such as hedge funds, hedge funds, and they were put in the high risk category. And they were divided into these groups called tranches. And tranches is a French word for slice because it refers to the fact that investments were sliced up. But actually, you should think of a tranche more like a container or something that's used to collect cash payments. So here's how the payment process works. Cash is accumulated, and the person in the senior tranche receives the payment first because it's the, he's the low risk investor. But because he's the low risk investor, he pays he gets the lowest amount of interest rate. Then the person in the mezzanine tranche gets paid second, and he gets sort of a in between amount of interest rate, not too high, not too low. And then the person in the equity tranche, and these are mainly hedge fund guys who are really big into taking on high risk, gets paid the last. But because he's taking on such a high risk, he gets the highest amount of interest. The best way to think of a CDO is like a bucket filled with water. If the CDO is good, meaning everyone pays like expected, cash payments will flow out like water in a bucket and fill every tranche. If the CDO is not good, meaning some people cannot pay, some of those tranches won't fill up, particularly those on the bottom. So because CDOs still had some risk to them, they had to have some collateral in case they went under. So investment bankers would use mortgage-backed securities or asset-backed securities or even bonds to serve as collateral for CDOs. And some investment banks even had other CDOs serving as collateral for their CDOs. I know, it's complicated, but CDOs aren't exactly an easy thing to understand. Well, here is where the problem began. The mortgage market went downhill, and because of that, many CDOs had tranches that were backed by subprime mortgages, which meant that a lot of CDOs were in trouble. But here is the issue that investors did not anticipate. They didn't realize that problems associated with the mortgage market 
would also affect the stability of the debt market, thereby affecting the stability of asset-backed securities. What investors forgot was that problems in the housing market were linked to other debt industries. If housing prices fell, families no longer had as much equity, and equity with houses are used to pay off loans and car loans and credit cards. So when the housing market went downhill, a lot of families couldn't make payments on regular loans, and those went downhill as well, therefore affecting the overall stability of collateralized debt obligations. And therein lies the problem with fixing this. The money was all divided up between different funds and people from all around the world, whether it was an insurance company in Italy, a hedge fund in New York, a pension fund in New Mexico, or a mutual fund based out of China. It wasn't that the financial engineers didn't know where the money came from. In fact, many of them had these sophisticated computer programs that tracked every loan and who they owned money to. But the larger question, and this is a question that people in the Treasury Department and others in the U.S. government need to resolve with this economic crisis, is figuring out how to pay back all those people who bought these complicated investment products. To review, collateralized debt obligations were this fruit basket of different investment products. They were sliced into pieces and given to investors based on which bucket or risk tranche they chose. When the housing market collapsed, CDOs collapsed, meaning that investors did not receive the payments that they expected. Coming up, what are credit default swaps? Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com.